Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are taking a look at the newest build of RPCS3, which massively boosts performance in The Last of Us. As you can see, we are now able to use ASM JIT instead of the interpreter. However, for our PPU decoder, we still need to use the interpreter as LLVM recompiler still makes this game crash. All of the settings you currently see on screen are the ones that I am using for best performance in this game. I am using this lower SPU thread priority as it seems to make my game crash less often. Coming across to the GPU tab, we can also see that we are now able to use the Vulkan renderer. However, we still need to use all of these settings as shown right here. When we come across to the debug tab, you can also see that we still need to use force CPU BLIT or Blit emulation. Now that you've seen all the settings I am using to get in game, let's actually load our game and see exactly how it is now running. As you can also see, I have also amassed quite a large amount of pre-compiled shaders. These will help with in-game performance as my game will not stutter when trying to build them. Okay, so now that my shader cache is loaded, we can basically already see by the FPS value in the top left hand corner that even now this game is performing much better than it previously did. In this emulator's previous iteration, we were seeing maybe 1, 2 or 3 FPS in these loading screens, and the fact that we're seeing 30 FPS on screen right now, even though it's only in a loading screen, this is still absolutely huge progress for this PlayStation 3 emulator. So now that we are actually loaded into the menu, you can see that we're still getting 16, 17 FPS. I'm going to press the start button. Uh, did I map it correctly? Yes. So right now we're at 17 FPS. Previously, we were barely able to navigate these menus at one and two FPS, but right now we are able to fully navigate them even though it's at half the FPS, well, roughly half the FPS of 15, 16 FPS. Let's just load into game. I'm going to load into the exact same scene that we previously loaded in in the epilogue of the game and we're going to see what the performance was like. In the previous run through of this, we were getting 1 or 0.5 FPS in this area and as you can now see on screen, we are getting 8 FPS looking in the exact same area where previously we were getting 0.5 FPS. This is absolutely massive and in the space of one week, they have made this performance improvement. Now, as you can see, there are fairly massive graphical issues. A lot of these dark shadowed areas, if you just look at the ground at times, it usually just fixes them. Or if you compile a shader, it usually fixes them. There you go, you can see that the graphics are basically fixed. Well, I wouldn't exactly say fixed, but much better than they previously were, where all the shadows are completely overcasting everything. Now, we need to remember that this performance improvement came in basically two weeks. This game only went in game about 14 or 15 days ago and it was running at 0 0.5, 0 0.6 and the best frame rate we could see even when looking at the ground was about 2 or 3 FPS. Now we are seeing 10 FPS in game when running around not looking at the ground. And I know it's not perfect, I know the graphics aren't rendered fully correctly. They are almost there though, you can see this kind of weird texture we have overlaid on screen. And to be honest, that texture is the least of our worries, especially when we have this epileptic fit inducing flashing RGB colors on screen. Now, what I am now going to do is I'm going to pause my game and I'm going to actually load into an earlier, I suppose you'd call it, section of the game. I'm going to load into the university section and we are going to take a look around in this area. Now, I did previously load into this area just so I could compile all the shaders so you guys wouldn't have to watch me compile shaders at 1 and 2 FPS. What you're going to see right now is you're going to see what the game is performing like right now and exactly what the performance is like when you do not have to cache any of your shaders. Okay, so here we are loaded into game and you can see we are getting almost 8 FPS but usually hanging in and around 7 FPS. You should hear that the audio is much improved over the previous version and this is mostly due to the fact that we are no longer running at 1 FPS and it is no longer horribly distorted. Bighorns. Three times conference champions. It would have been more if there was... Still a conference. 
So now that we're actually in game and we actually have control, we are getting around 5 FPS. Let's just, okay, so we can dismount our horse and let's actually do that. So we can actually run around and see what performance is like and check out if we're going to crash, if we're not going to crash and see exactly what our graphics render are like. So once we're off the horse, we're getting pretty much exactly the same performance uh, in and around 5 or 6 FPS. You can see that in some areas, graphics are rendered much better than others. Uh, when we look off to our left, we are getting the amazing RGB. If you, if you like RGB, I guess you're going to like this. Um, so yeah, it's not perfect, but it is vastly improved over what we previously had. Especially, as I said, when you consider that this game didn't even boot into game, into the menus, or anything at all two weeks ago. So, when we look up at the sky, we're getting around 8 FPS, and when we look down at the ground, we're getting in and around the same. So, we're getting probably a 1 or 2 FPS increase when we look up at the sky or look down at the ground. Let's just continue further into this university campus and continue to see what controls work and what don't work. So we can actually use all of the controls basically, we can hold down L2 to sprint, it is on my pad. Um, so let's just let's just move further in and see, see exactly how everything is looking and how everything is running. So we are staying basically in and around 5 FPS. Now 5 FPS generally is terrible, but when we look at it in emulator performance, looking at the ground, we get yeah, goes up by like 2 FPS, 2 or 3 FPS when we look at the ground. But yeah, as I was saying, in emulator performance, especially this area in a game's, not life cycle, but in this, this early in a game's emulator, emulation cycle, I guess you'd say, it is actually quite good performance, especially, as I said many times before, that this didn't even go in game two weeks ago. So you can see that when we look into dark areas, especially, we get some weird bugs. Usually you can solve them by just looking down at the ground. Yeah, you can see when you look down at the ground, some of the lighting issues are fixed. So let's just try and navigate up the stairs. You can also fix them in this game by turning on your flashlight. So if you click down on R3, so clicking down on your right thumbstick, you will turn on your flashlight. You can actually see that through my right shoulder, it actually has some transparency issues. So the, uh, the, the beam of the flashlight is actually showing through. So let's try to actually just pick up this flamethrower. And we can pick up the flamethrower. Now, it actually astounds me in this game how well the textures and all of the assets actually hold up. When we actually, can we select our weapons? Let's try switch a weapon and put this flamethrower onto our back. Yeah, but when we, when you look at the, when you look at the quality of the, uh, the textures on all of these assets, like look at this flamethrower. When you look at the flamethrower, it just looks amazing, like, especially when you consider that this game is as old as it is. So, okay, we have an upgrade bench over here, so let's see if we can actually interact with this upgrade bench. We have some collectibles here, we can pick them up with triangle, and let's actually go to the bench now, and hold down triangle, and yeah, it actually works. So we can, oh, okay, we have some, uh, so as, you, as we are seeing basically everywhere, we are getting, we are getting weird texture bleed or I'm not I'm not exactly sure what you'd call it but we're getting weird texture effects when we uh when we come in contact with light sources so yeah let's just uh let's navigate away from here and actually turn on our turn on our flashlight once again and try to navigate in through this building and see exactly see exactly how far we can get or see what performance is like so yeah performance isn't actually too terrible 7 and 8 fps now it's not playable but considering i've played through stuff like red dead redemption when it first started booting on this and this game itself i played it for about half an hour at about 0.5 or even 1 fps this is definitely a lot more playable and it's uh it's a lot more usable you can see that when your flashlight actually comes in contact with a hard surface it is kind of radiating its luminance luminance not luminance. It is actually, yeah, it's radiating its luminance. And uh, so yeah, let's just uh, let's just try open this door and continue out towards where the sniper's nest is. I don't know if any of you guys have actually played this game on PS3 or PS4. I played through a bit of this on the PS4, on the, was it the enhanced edition or the remastered edition, I believe it was called. But yeah, it's, um, it's a cool game. So I kind of remember parts of it. So uh, this is like one part I actually remember because I thought it was really cool when you get into the university and you see how everything is broken down and the conversations that uh that uh Ellie has with you it's uh it's it's really cool so we can actually come into our crafting I'm going to try craft 
this melee machete 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 or however however you pronounce it i don't actually have enough resources to craft anything so let's just listen more distance let's somehow craft extra listen more distance and as you can see yeah we have our machete machete on our back however you want to call it so yeah let's turn on our flashlight and come back inside and yeah like there's not to be honest the there still are massive issues with this game it's not like it's just running perfectly like this you need a game save in the first in the first circumstance to actually get in game because basically if you get to a cutscene it won't be able to render them i don't know why but just for some reason it won't actually be able to render them and it'll crash your game so what you actually need to do that if you want to play this game is you need to download kind of a 100 percent completed ps3 game save that's exactly what i did i just went on google and i typed in the last of us ps3 100 percent game save and there were just a load of game saves on a website and um i downloaded one of them I put them into the directory that uh, your game saves are are held in for RPCS3, and then when I loaded into game, it just gave me the option to select whichever chapter. So once you select a chapter, it'll actually load you past, I believe, the initial cutscene, and it will allow you to load into game and actually mess around and play around like you can see me doing. So if you want to see exactly where your game saves go, you can check out the video that I previously made on this. At the very start of that video, I show you exactly what settings you need to do, how you can activate the debug tab in order to turn on the debug settings that are needed for this game. And also I show you, and I also give you a game save that you can use to load into that previous scene that we were in. And you should also be able to use that game save to actually uh, switch chapters like you saw me doing so if you want to get to this chapter all you have to do is pause your game once you're loaded into that game save and you just go to chapter select and you select the university and it should load you into the exact same area that you saw me loading in so yeah guys that's kind of it for this video and um, there's not too much i can show you because as soon as we go past this area we're going to go into a cutscene and the game will basically just crash so at the end of this video again i want to give a massive thank you to all of my supporters over on patreon if you want to help support the channel, you can head over to Patreon, and if you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a crowdfunding web website that uh, allows you to help to support YouTube creators and content creators in making the videos and making the contents that they do. So if you want to support me, you can head on over there and pledge to support the channel. Um, anything you can possibly pledge is massively appreciated by me, as it helps me basically make the videos I make. So yeah, so once again guys, cheers for checking out the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.